Civil War, and, and if you're an alum from either one of the schools, it's like the Yankees and Red Sox. Pasadena, Ohio State awaits. First quarter, second Ducks possession. They're down seven. LaMichael James touchdown. Oregon, 73 yards in just over three minutes. But our Aaron Andrews saying, you know, Oregon coach Chip Kelly not impressed. After Oregon's scoring drive, head coach Chip Kelly met his quarterback on the field not to congratulate him and say, hey, great job. He said, hurry up. Why are you guys taking so long? Let's go. Move quicker. Aaron wearing University of Washington purple. We need to talk. Next Oregon possession. <laughs> I got your pace picked up. Masoli takes a shot downfield. Loops it complete. And Mail in a foot race. Delivers. Hey, Coach Kelly. Is that quick enough for you? Well, how quick was it? Masoli uh, to, to Mail. Uh, three plays, 75 yards, a buck 23. Ducks 14 10 after the first quarter. Last year, these teams combined to score 103 points, so they're off the pace. 14 13, James, handoff. Steven Paella causes the fumble. Now, check out the offensive lineman for Oregon, Mark Asper. Feet don't fail me now! <laughs> <laughs> Crawling can't get it. Oregon State does. They kick a field goal 16 14. Oregon response, 10 plays, 58 yards, 3 minutes, 11 seconds. It's James again, 21-16 Oregon. Next Oregon State possession. 20 seconds to go, Sean Canfield to James Rogers. Canfield, 208 yards passing in the first half. Oregon State up 23-21 at half. Third quarter, opening drive. Beaver Nation! Canfield to Casey Keos, first touchdown of the season. Oregon State up nine, and Otson's going, oh, no. Look, Garrett Blunt, there he is. You remember him, Boise State, don't need to see it again. Under six minutes to go. This is what Oregon fans want to see. This kid made a living doing this his junior season. 12 yards, first touchdown since the 08 Holiday Bowl. Oregon, though, still down two. Now they're down five. Oregon State kicked a field goal. And James, he led the nation in runs over 20 yards. Pac-10 freshman rushing record. He said it. He broke the old record set the year before by Oregon State's Quiz Rogers. 52 yards there. Oregon went for two, didn't get it. So they're up one going into the fourth quarter. 37-33, Oregon now, third and eight. Canfield sacked by Kenny Rowe, loss is seven. Mike Riley's got a decision to make. Do I try and kick the field goal, make it a one-point game? I'm still gonna need to stop Oregon, or do I, I just go for it now? He went for it now, didn't get it. Canfield's throw outside the reach of James Roger. Oregon State turns it over on downs. Now, Coach Kelly says, well, if I run the clock out, we could win this thing. Third, uh, fourth and three. And Masoli is a big man. Wow. And a defensive back coming up right there, Lance Mitchell. No chance against the 220-something pound Masoli who keeps the drive alive. Now a fourth and two. Kelly could kick the field goal there, make it a seven-point game. He says no. Kenyon Barner gets the first down, and that's going to put the game away. Break out the Roses. Because Oregon is headed back to the Rose Bowl. 37-33 is your final. The duck, come, duck comes in on a motorcycle. It goes out like it's a mosh pit. They are crazy at Rennie's and Taylor's. They're bumming at the Peacock. Coach Kelly. Fever in Central Michigan taking on Ohio for the title. First quarter, no score. Lefevre looking for Cody Wilson for the touchdown. Central Michigan up 7-0. With that touchdown, Lefevre sets the bowl subdivision record for total career touchdowns with 147. He said when you play four years in a spread, you're going to be able to put up those kind of numbers. Ohio trailing 10-0. Theo Scott takes a snap, pitches it to Taylor Price. Looks like a reverse, but Price stops and throws it to a wide open turn to McCray. McCray seven catches, buck 41, and the touchdown. Lefevre still doing his thing to Brian Anderson. Another touchdown for Lefevre. Central Michigan leads 17-7 at the break. He also broke Chad Pennington's Mac record for touchdowns. Fourth quarter, Ohio trails 20-10. Theo Scott sacked by Frank Zombo. That forced Ohio to attempt a long field goal, which they missed. This is their last chance. Fourth and five now. Scott rolls out, tries to buy time, but Larry Knight makes the stop. Central Michigan, third Mac title in four years. Boy Stadium, Texas presumably plays for the national title with a win. Loss gives TCU and Cincinnati hope for Pasadena. Colt McCoy, no ground gain in his Heisman hopes. In fact, he went backward. Second play from scrimmage, deflected and picked off. Corn Huskers convert the turnover into three points. McCoy once again intercepted. 
Prince Amu Kamara. Colt McCoy had only two interceptions in his previous six games. He was picked off three times Saturday night. The Texas offense, first seven drives, 39 yards, five punts, couple of picks. Second quarter, down 6 nothing. Colt McCoy, end zone. The play would be reviewed. Review would factor into this game considerably, and it does appear that he got the ball over the plane. Longhorns up at halftime, 7-6. And Domiken Sue dominated this game in a D-line performance that was as good as any you've seen. He's number one on Mel Kuyper's board, and here you see why he cannot be doubled. <laughs> Colt McCoy had never been sacked more than four times in a game. He was sacked nine times Saturday, nine times. Four and a half to Endama Kensu. Fourth quarter we go. Nebraska field goal made it 10-9. Here's the ensuing kickoff, and look what ensues. Freshman Marquise Goodwin fields it at the one. What are they doing? A night of baffling decision-making by the Longhorns. So here we go. On the drive, it's third down. McCoy. Jordan Shipley got to have it, and he does. McCoy, 20 of 36 for 184. Seven catches for Shipley, but 36. McCoy is intercepted again. Dijon Gomes rips the pass away from Dan Buckner. Huskers now with a chance to take the lead. Fourth and six, Alex Henry. McCoy can't even watch from 43 for the lead. Got it. Nebraska up 12-10 with 1.44 to go. Holy moly. Ensuing kickoff. It's not Henry. It's Addy Kudelik pushes the kickoff out of bounds. Oh, no. Texas at the 40. And then here's another huge Nebraska mistake. First play after the kickoff. McCoy, Shipley, watch the tackle. It's a horse collar. Larry Asante, 34-yard gain for the Longhorns. They're at the 26. Now watch the clock here. They ran it for a loss. There you go. That's the one timeout. They do have a timeout left. That's the game clock. McCoy is tackled inbounds at the 29. Now Texas does not use its timeout. And you're thinking, okay, they do have the one TO. Run it right down the middle between the hash marks. Use your timeout. Then kick your field goal. But the clock, you'll notice here, this is live action, continues to run. What are they doing? Hunter Lawrence, the kicker, warming up. So next play, all right, maybe they're going to spike it here. Maybe run it. Here you go. Run it down the middle. Use your timeout. But inexplicably, Colt McCoy is rolling out, throws it away, oh. and the game clock is at zero. What's going on? One more look. Now, after the game, Big 12 supervisor of officials Walt Anderson said they clearly saw when they looked at it. One second left, you'll see the ball hits a railing behind the sideline on the luxury suite. The rules say the clock stops not when it goes out of bounds, but the clock stops when the football hits something. So there's one second left. Hunter Lawrence had never kicked a game-winning field goal. From 46, Newton! He just squeaked it through and Texas wins. Bo Pelini's defense was brilliant, but Nebraska's offense managed only 106 yards, their lowest total in 25 years, and Texas survived. Now the question is, was Colt McCoy watching the play clock, or was he watching the game clock? Either way, they're Big 12 champions. Well, there was 15 seconds left. The line got a little bit confused, so I just rolled out and threw out of bounds. Uh, you know, expecting there to be one or two seconds left on the clock. They rushed the field early. I knew there was time on the clock left. We've beaten Nebraska this way every time we've ever played, and they played great tonight. You have to give them so much credit. Proud of our kids. We're the best come from behind team in the country. Wish we didn't have to come from behind, but what a great effort by our kids at the end. I think we'll be ranked number two going to Pasadena. That's what should happen. That's what we said the whole time. This was a great win for Texas. Number one, Florida, and number two, Alabama, have been on a collision course since September for the SEC championship game. Alabama seemed to be in control from the start with the offense. Mark Ingram missed some of last week's game with a hit pointer, playing strong early. Left side, he'll move the change for the first down. Gain of 15 on this Florida defense, the nation's best. Then Ingram up the middle, and he wouldn't quit. Moving those legs, reaching out, and Urban Meyer can't be happy. Alabama missed the extra point. They were up 9-3 after one quarter. As for Tim Tebow, in the Heisman race with Ingram, down 12-3 in the second, Tebow running left. A pickup of 15 before getting knocked out by Kareem Jackson. Tebow trying to fire up his boys. Florida looked like they were sleepwalking in the first half. Next play, Tebow, left side. 
to David Nelson. Touchdown, Gators back in this. Now Tebow and Florida down 12 to 10. But Alabama comes right back. Next drive, Greg McElroy. The perfect screen set up to Ingram. And watch Ingram. The little guy working off those blocks. Just a momentum killer for Florida. 69 yards down the sidelines. Inside the red zone. Next play, Alabama brings in defensive tackle Terrence Cody. Mount Cody. And he's used as a decoy. Ingram would go the other way. Joe Hayden. Florida cornerback said Alabama seemed to want it more. Florida would kick a field goal before halftime. It was 19-13 Bama. Third quarter. The tie driving. McElroy faking the run to right net. Colin Peak, the beautiful catch. McElroy, 12 of 18, 239. That touchdown, Bama up 26-13. And then the third down conversions. As Urban Meyer seemed puzzled, so did the Florida defense. Great drive. Third and two, Ingram. First down. Then a third and seven, McElroy to Julio Jones, first down. 11 for 15, Alabama on third downs, including five for five on this drive. This against the nation's best defense. Ingram, 113 yards on the ground. Alabama chewing up the clock in the third quarter. Start of the fourth now, Tebow trying to pump up the defense. No effect. Same Alabama drive, first and goal. Cody in at fullback, this time Ingram will follow. The big man, and I mean big man. He's a biscuit shy of 400 pounds. The drive for Alabama, 17 plays, 88 yards, 8.47 on the clock, their longest drive of the season against the best defense in the nation. Florida now driving. Now, remember, Tebow had that magic last year in the SEC title game in the fourth quarter. It wasn't to be. Javier Arenas in the end zone with the interception. One more look. Aaron Hernandez open, running to the back of the corner. But Tebow's throw, line drive, instead of putting some touch and airing it out. And Urban Meyer can sense it. As the game winds down, Tebow emotional on the sidelines, being consoled because Alabama in control 32-13. Meanwhile, Ingram and Mr. No-Nonsense, Nick Saban, a chest bump? Alabama going all over the field in celebration. Julio Jones afterwards said, Tim Tebow is a great player, but we're tired of him. Ingram starts to cramp up during the trophy presentation. He said afterwards, everything we did all year long was to beat them, to beat Florida. And Ingram tied an SEC championship record with three rushing touchdowns. The 251 rushing yards are the most allowed by the Gators in five seasons under Urban Meyer. It's Alabama's 22nd SEC title, and it ends Florida's 22-game winning streak perfect regular season for Boise State. Broncos looking for their 26th great regular season win, bidding up here on New Mexico State. It's Kellen Moore's 39th touchdown pass of the year. Titus Young, 7-0 Boise. Second quarter, Jeremy Avery. Reverse! Hard to find the blue guys on the blue field. 14-0. Doug Martin, 8 carries, 83 yards, and 4, count them, 4 touchdowns. Boise, 42-7. The Broncos are 13-0. They've won 26 straight regular season games. Thrilling ACC championship game in Tampa between number 10, Georgia Tech, against Clemson. C.J. Spiller and the Tigers, they lost to Tech in the regular season by three. First quarter, Spiller, no one's going to stop him. Three-yard touchdown here. Clemson up 7-0. He didn't get a shot before the game. He tried to play without a shot, and uh, so he went in and got a shot. So he's uh, he's wide open. Well, after the drive, you saw Spiller turf toe. That was the only thing that stopped him. Moves like a sports car. 41 yards down the sideline. Clemson would miss the extra points, and we're tied at 13. Third quarter, Tech up by three. Josh Nesbitt, they don't like the pass, Georgia Tech. They don't do it often, but when they do, they connect. Demarius Thomas, 70 yards down the sideline, and Georgia Tech. Up 30 to 20. This was the anti-Texas Nebraska game. Neither team punted. They racked up 883 yards, 656 on the ground. Nine of them coming here by Spiller. His fourth touchdown of the day. Clemson down by six later in the fourth. Spiller down the sideline. How about 301 all-purpose yards? He was the game MVP. 
This would set up a touchdown for Clemson. They're up by one, but too bad. Spiller didn't play defense. Next Georgia Tech possession. Jonathan Dwyer, less than 130 to play. 15 yards. Tech up by five. They missed the two-point conversion. Last chance for Clemson. Fourth and one. Kyle Parker, he stopped short. Paul Johnson, what a turnaround That's for Tech. That's my move. Oh, yeah. They win 39-34. They're BCS bound. Brett Edwards now, our BCS analyst, provides some clarity on the BCS. Trojans in trouble hosting Arizona. That's 12-year-old Jake Olson participating in the coin dust and conducting the USC band. It's been an inspiration for the Trojans all year long. Second quarter, here's Matt Barkley. There's Ronald Johnson, 7-7, but SC just could not generate any consistent momentum in the game. 14 apiece in the fourth, it's Joe McKnight. Only 35 yards rushing in the game. But McKnight becomes the Trojans' first 1,000-yard runner since Reggie Bush in 05. USC settles for three on the drive. Next Arizona possession, Nick Foles. Jerron Kreiner stumbling into the end zone with only 3.14 to go. Look again. Arizona 21-17. Three seconds left. Barkley taken down. And Arizona beats USC 21-17. Mike Stoops' first win over the Trojans. SC 8-4, and, and they're looking at the point set up. Juice Williams has all day, and I mean all day, to find Mikel LaShore. Good Lord. And he breaks a tackle, and LaShore going over the top for the end touchdown. 52-45 Illinois. Now six seconds left in the fourth. Fresno, fourth down. Ryan Colburn and Jamel Hamler, who would not be denied. The extension, the review, give it to the kid. Fresno State, though, down 52-51 after this. So instead of the tie, Pat Hill, I love it, going for the two-point conversion, Colburn rolls left, the pressure, throws the ball up for grabs, tipped, and look at the big man, Devin Cunningham, 6'6", 350. Mom, look what I found. How about the two-point conversion going in with the football? 6'6", 350 now. And I'm being generous. Fresno State not being kind to Illinois. 53-52 in the craziest fish you will see. It was Lord Houston, highest scoring team in the land. Case Keenum's thrown for a bajillion yards, taking on East Carolina. Giovanni Ruffin powering it in. Skip holds his team with a 14-13 lead. Same score, 30 seconds left in the first half. Keenum to Tyron Carrier. What a terrific throw right across the middle, throw, showing the strength of his arm. Touchdown, Houston. Boy, Keenum had a huge day, but Patrick Pinkney wasn't bad at Dwayne Harris. Uh, this is a big play as East Carolina tries to be the only team to defend the championship since the USA was formed. They beat Tulsa last year for seven turnovers, had a bevy of turnovers in this one, too. Keenum picked off by Van Eskridge, takes it 30 yards back down to the seven, and in the ensuing possession, very next play, in fact, Dominique Lindsay. This is power running right here, not being denied, just moving the pile into the end zone. 31-19, Case Keenum, he was 56 of 75 for, see, yes, I said 75 for wow. 527 yards, five touchdowns, 31-26. Here goes Ruffin again. Uh, just a good effort there to get into the end zone. Looked like they're home free, but no. 38-32 now after Houston has scored, and they're driving for more. Keenum throwing for the winner. Deflected, Van Eskridge again. The big hitter, known for bringing the lumber, shows the soft hands and the deft feet. The game-sealing interception. And East Carolina, champions of Conference U.S.